To DJI fans, agricultural and drone pilots, valued partners, and farmers, my name is Chris, and I'd like you to meet your new friend, the DJI Agris T40. This is our seventh generation of agricultural drones. Seven years ago, this is how we worked. Today, DJI Agris drones have serviced a cumulative area of more than 200 million hectares around the world. That's nearly four times the size of Thailand. Today's agricultural drones are powerful tools for pesticide and fertilizer application, seeding, precision spraying and spreading, and topographic surveying. To understand the versatility of agricultural drones, a good place to start is crop protection. The food that we eat every day, the clothes you wear, and the raw materials used in factories all over the world all depend on crops. Now to ensure their healthy growth, a variety of tools and methods have been developed to protect them. Let's take a look. Farmers who cultivate on hilly, scattered terrain often rely on backpack sprayers, which are often unreliable, inefficient, and labor-intensive. Now, large swaths of flatland are best suited for machine-assisted cultivation. The most commonly used ones are self-propelled crop protection machines. Now, as you can see, they are very large and much more efficient than manual labor. But they are a perfect solution. First of all, they can't be used with most crops in their later stages of growth, such as corn, sorghum, and sugar cane not unless they were this tall. In flooded soil like rice fields, the sheer weight of these machines will sink them into the mud. Finally, they consume a lot of fuel and generate a lot of harmful exhaust. Now, if your land is larger than dozens of football fields, a great option for you would be spraying pesticides with a fixed-winged aircraft. In the US, 40% of pesticides are sprayed efficiently using this type of aircraft each year. However, pesticides tend to leak from fixed-winged aircraft, sometimes even over a distance of a few kilometers. It can be hazardous if the leaked pesticides fall into other crops or even bodies of water. Moreover, droplets sprayed from fixed-winged aircraft do not penetrate well, so most of them fall on the top surface and not on the middle and lower parts of the plant, where infections can take even stronger roots. The aircraft are also unable to completely cover all parts of any given field. With the development of the technology, more and more people are turning to a new type of tool, multi-rotor drones. These type of battery care aircraft can efficiently fly and hover to spray efficiently over any type of crop, regardless of height or size. And the best thing about that is they can be particularly useful in places that are really, really challenging, where manual labor, fixed wing aircraft, and large machines can struggle, such as steep hillsides and terrain like this. To demonstrate, we're going to take the T-40 into dry fields, rice paddies, and hilly terrain to see just how it can perform in this wide range of agricultural environments. Now, behind me is a rice field. Planting and growing rice is a challenging, complex process that involves seedling cultivation, transplantation, pesticide spraying, and fertilizer spreading. Now, which of these steps can the T40 assist in? Believe it or not, all of them. Agricultural drones can be used to spread seeds directly into the fields, which simplifies seedling cultivation and transplantation in one go. In the early stages, fertilizers may be spread in the field using on-ground machines, but to do so in the more mature phases will definitely crush the crops. Farmers usually spread fertilizers by hand, but that is labor-intensive and produces inconsistent results. Agricultural drones do so from the air, which is fast and efficient. An Agris T40 can spread eight to 10 tons of fertilizer per day, which is more than 10 times more productive than manual labor. Agricultural drones are also not limited by terrain, such as flooded rice fields. By using them to spread feed, farmers no longer need to take their boats out to feed their fish or shrimp. The drones spread their payload evenly, saving on feed and producing a greater yield. We've just been to a rice field, so what about crops like corn, soybean, and wheat? Can farmers of these dry field crops benefit from the T40? Corn, for example, requires weeding, spraying of fungicides and pesticides, and pulling of stems and leaves. And in the rainy seasons like right now, heavy on-ground machines can heavily sink into the mud, causing enormous problems. Since agricultural drones operate from above, muddy, uneven terrain is never an issue. The aerial advantage also means height is never a problem. At a height of up to three meters, farmers either do their best to deal with spraying and spreading mature corn crops, or simply give up altogether but no crop is too tall for an agricultural drone, so we'll effectively treat a tall corn plant no problem. Now, while the height of the plant can be one issue, the height of the land can be just as challenging. 
Most orange trees are planted on hills, where the steepest slopes can reach 60 degrees. Large machinery in a space like this are out of the question. The traditional solution would be spraying tubes. Workers would fill dozens of meters of tubes with pesticides and often work in temperatures of 35 degrees Celsius or above. By the end of the day, you'd have an orchard reeking of pesticides and exhausted workers who have been thoroughly exposed to harmful chemicals. Drones, on the other hand, can make quick, safe work that has simply revolutionized orchard management. Pre-programmed 3D routes mean that a drone can maintain the ideal height above the trees as it flies up and down the hill. Workers can stay out of the orchard during the operation, preventing exposure to and inhalation of the pesticides. In addition, agricultural drones can avoid the inefficient consumption of water from manual spraying, which can amount to two tons per hectare, most of which is lost to the ground, which can pollute local water supplies and spread the harm far beyond this hillside. In these few scenarios, we can see that agricultural drones are adaptable and versatile for any number of challenges in crop height, terrain, environment, and more. It's no wonder how they've become rapidly popular all around the world. Now that we understand the features and benefits of an agricultural drone, you must be asking yourself, how do you use one? So before 2016, agricultural drones were not equipped with onboard radar or cameras like you see here. At that time, pilots would have to keep their sights on the drone and even have to use a spotter. And at that time as well, beginners would have to take four hours at least of training per day for an entire month to become a qualified pilot. Now, you can map out an entire flight area simply by walking the perimeter of the area with a drone's remote controller in hand to plot out location points. With a few minor adjustments of the flight path, the drone will be ready to perform an autonomous operation. While the drone takes off and flies its path on its own, what's the pilot supposed to do? Simple, enjoy a break under the shade. Automation makes drones easier to operate, but sometimes there is the issue of obstacles. How can agricultural drones avoid them? The most basic way is to mark out obstacles, such as electricity poles in trees when mapping the land, so that the drone can avoid them. But if the area is large and the obstacle is too tall, it can be very difficult to mark out the obstacles. So what can we do with the T40? Plenty! One FPV camera at the front delivers a real-time camera feed to the operator's remote controller, letting them see everything in the drone's path and fly around trees and poles. In addition, the T-40 can also avoid obstacles on its own with a built-in phased array radar system, which detects and bypasses obstacles from 50 meters away. Today's agricultural drones are powerful and easy to use, becoming an indispensable part of agriculture today. DJI Agris drones can be found in more than 100 countries and regions all over the world. So, how efficient are agricultural drones in the real world? In the next video, we'll take you out on the field test so you can see for yourself. Just tap here and we'll see you there.